People from around the world were Alberta bound in February of 1988 for the 15th Olympic Winter Games. It was a chance for Calgary to show the rest of Canada and the entire world just what it could do. Calgary had asked to host the Winter Olympic Games three times before. In 1981, the fourth time did it. Back in 1981, Calgary was just beginning to feel the squeeze of a recession. This, and the fact that no Olympic Winter Games had ever turned a profit, brought the rare Calgary pessimists out in force. Bill Pratt was president of the Calgary Games. Oh, about 82% said we're going to have a ball. 18% said we can't do it. So what's the worry, okay? And, and there was always that could we do it, couldn't we do it, can we do it, can't we do it. You know, there was always that. That was always with us. What kind of show would we read? What bunch of cowboys from Alberta put on, you know? And, and we surprised them. Borrowing a page from his experience at the Stampede, Pratt decided to staff the Olympics primarily with volunteers. Not just a few, but more than 10,000 of them. The largest army of volunteers ever assembled in Alberta. Ed Roberts was one of them. After he had asked me if I would chair this ceremonies committee, and I, before I had a chance to think about it, I agreed that I would. And later on, Bill was explaining to me that uh, these opening ceremonies have got to set the tone for this whole thing. It's got to get off to a spectacular start. And if it's a flop, Eddie, you better be on the first plane out of town. And if you turn around, I'll be in the seat behind you. <laughs> That's Bill's way of encouraging you to get on with the job. The opening ceremonies showed Canadian pride and Calgary hospitality at their best. The parade of athletes included the flags of 59 countries, an Olympic record. The torch was lit by the youngest person ever to do so, an 11-year-old girl by the name of Robin Perry. Anyway, uh, we're right getting to the dramatic moment here and things have to happen right on time and on comes the, uh, the uh, intercom system. We can't find Robin. Hugh Dunn produced the Olympic ceremonies and remembers the moment of panic when he heard the torch girl was missing. We don't know where she is and of course the question is, go get her. <laughs> That's the answer, just solve this problem. As you can imagine, you know, five minutes when this, we're building up to the, the entrance of this thing and she's to take the torch. Where is she? I don't know. Right before I was supposed to come out, I, I left and went to the washroom. So I was actually late. <laughs> well, because we didn't know. I didn't... How was I supposed to know? <laughs> so they're running up and down the hallways just looking for me. Robin was on her mark, on time, and no one watching the opening ceremonies that day had any idea of the backstage panic that had just occurred before the torch was passed to the final runner. And I turned around and ran up the stairs. I do remember I was running up the stairs and there was a, I think he was on the Russian team and he stood out and he was taking pictures. As I'm running up the stairs, I just remember saying, move. <laughs> and I think I put my hand out to, cause I had to go up that side and he was standing right in the way. So I just told him to move. <laughs> That's about it. Just who would make the final torch run was the biggest secret of the games. Robin, a seventh grader at the time, had been practicing to skate in the opening and closing ceremonies. A week before the games began, her parents told her she would be doing one more thing. When she came home from the skating that night, he brought out a ball peen hammer. <laughs> yes. We're in a two-story oh, really. two house, if only the world knew. And we said, Robin, take this and run up and down the steps. She took it. Yeah. We said, well, go again. And I says, how does that feel? Is that heavy? Or? And it was about a five-pound ball. She says, no, it's okay. And we said, well, we've got to tell you something. And, and they're see. just bubbling with excitement. And I, I just thought they were idiots. Like, uh, <laughs> you know, how often do your parents stand at the bottom of the stairs looking proud as punch while you're running up and down the stairs with a sledgehammer? It just, <laughs> I thought they were off the wall. <laughs> <laughs> couldn't understand it at all and then they both just sat down and they were all excited and happy and they told me. The 15th Olympic Winter Games in Calgary contributed more than 1.4 billion dollars to the Canadian economy. 
that for the first time in history, an Olympic Winter Games turned a profit more than $27 million. Canada Olympic Park, among other sites in town, remains a tangible legacy to the games that were held here. Tomorrow's Olympians train where yesterday's Olympians are remembered. Calgary had so much fun with the 1988 games that it has bid for them again in 2010 and passed the torch to a new generation. Oh, we knew it was going to happen all along. We knew it was going to be the best ever. What are you talking about? In Calgary, the impossible takes just a little longer. That's all. Calgary has always been an optimistic city. There's always been good times ahead. In another 50 years or so, there'll probably be a million people living in the city, and there'll be that many more stories to tell. I'm James Keelhan, and I'd like to thank you for sharing in this time with us, and thank you for being a part of what Calgary remembered. Take care. Let's go downtown. There's a dance hall I know. There's a band of renown. Darling, let's go out waltzing. Take a spin on my arm It's a cure for what ails you A proof against harm At the fork of two rivers Near a wood palisade Neath the turquoise blue sky While the sun slowly falls I sat down on the bank Watched the rise of the moon as the leaves on the water did the Bow River walls. As the leaves on the water did the Bow River walls. Major funding for Calgary Remembered was provided by Agrium taking the fertilizer industry to new heights through innovative thinking and promoting the responsible use of quality fertilizer. Agrium, where the future is growing. And by the Calgary Exhibition and Stampede. And by the Friends of Seven.